that we are headed out for an afternoon stroll from the marina. Sally's down there. Gonna head to the park. So we have just gotten back from a walk down the Strand in Townsville. We're in the uh, Breakwater Marina in Townsville and we got back to the boat and there was a really bad smell outside the boat and at first we thought it was the new air con conditioner um, because it blows all the air out and we thought that's where it was coming from. Um, but when we got inside um, it's not, it wasn't the air con and it took us about 10 minutes to figure out where um, where the smell was coming from. It was quite a strong putrid smell and um, it's, it's never good when you come home, come back to a boat or a house and um, there's a strange smell going on. It means something's wrong and um, we've figured out the problem. So we've come down to the companion way and this is where the smell gets stronger. And yeah, so I thought it was uh, my beloved aircon in the back cabin here and the way it cools itself is it sucks air from the cabin over the evaporator and pumps it outside. That's how come we could smell it straight away. But then we found the smell was stronger in here in the engine room. And uh, the only thing we really have in here running at the moment is the hot water system at the back and the refrigeration system there for our fridge and freezer. And um, I isolated both of them and the start smell was still very strong and that's when we realised that it was the start battery. As soon as I took the lid off the top, it was sweating and it's really, really hot. So, what we have on board Summer is we have an uh, AVR. It's in this cupboard here and, and, and what it does is, they're called several different acronyms and names. But uh, if the voltage is over a certain amount, then it opens the circuit between the house bank and the start bank. So we have a two-way one, this one here, uh, a blue C system at the top there. And what that means is we've got a 90 amp alternator in our main engine. And when that's going, we can charge our house bank with that. And then when the solar is cranking into our house bank or our charger is, it'll open and it'll do the start battery as well. And I was just checking the start battery then uh, and the voltage is dropping off really, really fast, which means it's a good indication we've dropped the cell and that's when the battery charger thought that the um, battery wasn't uh, fully charged and started pumping it into it and she started sweating and bulging and lucky we caught in time before it exploded. So, yeah, it was really quite smelly though. So this also means that we might be purchasing a uh, start battery. <laughs> Yes, yes we will be. <laughs> but all I did with this here is these blue sea systems, it has an earth on the bottom, I've ripped it out here, but if you pull that then it'll isolate the system. It'll believe that the fuse has happened and there's been a fault and it'll isolate it. So if you pull that out, it just break the circuit straight away. And um, yeah. So as you can see here, I just um, took the terminal off the battery just to make sure in case there was a short or something in the system that was uh, making it draw extra power. And then that way, I just put the multimeters on it and it was charged to 14 volts. It's down to 11 already. It's still really, really hot. And that just indicates that the battery is at the end of its life. We don't even need to load test it. We can try. Load testing it just means you put your multimeters on it you try and turn over your engine and you see how much it drops. 
and generally speaking depending on the type of battery the size of the engine the cold cranking amps if it goes sort of below 10 volts that's when you know she's starting to get a bit tired but this one here is definitely going to need to be replaced so we have installed the new battery um, we went shopping for a new start battery because the other one was definitely fried uh, wasn't exactly the type of shopping that I was hoping for while in Townsville um, but we got a hybrid battery so the other the old one was just a start battery this one we went for a hybrid battery so it can take more load because the anchor winch is hooked up to that battery as well so it starts the motor and um, does the uh, anchor winch so it hauls the anchor um, Sam has installed it and it's all in um, yeah I'll give you guys a look at the battery it's just a battery but um, I'll give you guys a look it's in the room. so it's here and this is the new battery so yeah that's it all installed really thankful that we were in a marina to um, get it on board because it was really heavy um, so good thing was that we were in a marina because I can't imagine handing that up from a dinghy on, up on board because it was so heavy um, the bad thing is that we were in a marina and we had the battery charger on it so, and we fried the battery that way uh, so we wouldn't never have fried the battery if we weren't in a marina so good and bad um, there was nothing wrong with the old battery it was getting old um, we had no issues starting the engine or hauling the anchor but it was getting old so um, it's not a bad thing that we got a new battery but um it definitely would have lasted a bit longer um but yeah she's all installed um sam did a great job and yeah so now we have a new start battery hey guys so basically we, we just figured we'd give you a little bit of a, an update of the master plan for our lives we've been in townsville for a month now and we've learned two main things one of them being that we are not necessarily marina people and um, we've absolutely loved our time in the marina here um, it's been great with having Charlie and the strand in Townsville is amazing we've had a really great time going to the water park the playgrounds um, we've had a really wonderful time meeting everyone in the marina everyone has been absolutely fabulous and the marina staff have been really wonderful to us but um, with a boat, uh, with moving from a house to a boat, you make certain sacrifices and we're finding that um, for us personally, we made so many sacrifices to live on a boat and in a marina we're not getting the benefit of being in a house um, and we're also not getting the benefit of living on a boat so we're not going snorkeling every day or kayaking or um, checking out new places. Um, yeah <laughs> that's it but we, we love townsville and we will definitely come back for a shorter stay the the marina uh, is, is fantastic like kate said and the proximity of everything everything's nice and close and that's just absolutely great but the second thing that we noticed was that uh that we've learned is that trying to sell a boat over christmas and new year's is probably the <laughs> worst time of year to do it and it, it, it's unfortunate it may have just been meant to be, but we have been here for a month, we've had enough and we want to keep moving. But now there's quite a few people who, who want to come and see the boat. But uh, unfortunately we are going to move further south, hope that people will want to see it along the way. We can come into ports and that for them. So the boat is still for sale, but that way we can keep traveling, keep exploring, uh, live life to the fullest as we'd like to. And uh, then we're closer to the catamaran that we're meant to move on to, which is down in Brisbane at the moment. So. Yeah, move, keep moving south out of the heat. Uh, it is summer, so we are in the tropics in Townsville, and it, it is hot and humid. And we want to keep moving south. The catamaran's down south near Brisbane, and down south near Brisbane's where it gets cooler. And, and everyone keeps asking us um, when a cyclone comes, where's the safest place to be? And, the truth is, the safest place to be is where the cyclone isn't. And <laughs> cyclones are up here, so we'll get out of the cyclone belt where they aren't, which is the safest place to be. Yeah, and it's weird. I thought, personally, 
selling a boat over Christmas would be great because that's when people get people you yeah. get presents and I just thought oh a boat would be a great present for Christmas and um, in reality a lot of people spend time with their families they go on trips that they've been planning for a long time it's not necessarily the time that they look for um, boats and big purchases yeah so um, yeah yeah so we're gonna head on south tomorrow uh, we're going to go straight to the Whit Sundays because there's a bit of a blow coming in after that. We can do a bit of exploring there uh, and then keep on trucking south from there. We're lucky. We've met some people up here in Townsville that are going to travel with us. and They've got a, a little daughter as well, so Charlie's got a play friend. Yeah. And um, yeah, we'll keep you posted and yeah, let but, you know. But for now, we're both still for sale and we're headed south into cooler weather. <laughs> <laughs> fueled up, gotten water on this morning, 7 a.m. and we are headed off. And you can see we did a bit of shopping in Townsville, we got some kayaks. We'll need to sort out the ropes and the fenders later. Just coming past the duck ponds in Townsville. There's Sam. And there's Townsville. So while we were in the marina, we tried to do daily walks every day down the Esplanade, um, down what's called the Strand in Townsville. And they've got a free water park, they've got a swimming pool there, the Tombrook pool. They've got uh, lots of kids' playgrounds and everything. And we loved it because there was a playground that Charlie loved um, that was all fenced in, um, protected from the road that was next, next door. Um, just a really nice walk under trees, shade, really nice to get up early and do the walk or do it in the late afternoon. Um, lots of places to eat and if you're ever thinking about staying at the Townsville Marina, the Breakwater Marina, it's um, walking distance to like everything. So you can walk to Coles, you can walk to Woolies, the shops, um, everything's within um, walking distance which is one of the main reasons we chose to stay there. Oh uh, yeah, the, um, the Strand, uh, Castle Hill is, if I get my finger right, is there. <laughs> That's Castle Hill, and um, Castle Hill's the, like the big mountain in town and it's a big walk and you can drive up it as well. A lot of people do it for exercise, but um, 
really nice views at the top of it. We've done it once before. So Townsville is in far north Queensland in Australia and it's up in the tropics so it's really hot up here. Uh, so it's 7.30 in the morning. We are underway and already sweaty. So this is what I used to call a lip sweat season. You just constantly have sweat on your upper lip. It's great. Townsville is one of the major ports that's up in far north Queensland. And what they've done around Magnetic Island is quite interesting because it's all shallow here. Um, out here, they've, there's a shipping channel all the way around Magnetic Island. So we've just, we're crossing through the shipping channel at the moment. But I'll turn this around. There we go. And all, there we go. All out there is the shipping channel. So you can see it keeps going and keeps going. And then as we come this way, there we go, it goes all the way into Townsville. But yeah, the, the shipping channel doesn't just stop here, which is where they normally do. It keeps going and goes all the way around the island and off to the other side. So it's a quite a large shipping channel they have here. And um, they're, they're dredging it at the moment as well. So there's a big uh, barge and uh, tugs as well to move it around. It's quite interesting. But um, all of this is quite shallow and We'll pan to the uh, Navionics and show you how shallow it is, but it is quite shallow for, for large ships here. So you can see around Magnetic Island, it's quite shallow. Sevens, six, and in this channel here, it's 12. So this is the one they were dredging. But you can see this channel goes from Townsville out to the Coral Sea. And this is the anchorage for the large ships. But yeah, around Townsville, it's not shallow for us because we're 2.2, so all this is great. But for large ships, their drafts are quite large, uh, quite deep. So the channel is being dredged at the moment, and you can see it's 12 meters in the middle of the channel there. But yeah, if they were to venture outside, it's about 6 meters. So it's not quite deep enough for large, large ships. Join us next week as we explore Upstart Bay.